One common way that we use percents is to describe not just a portion of some base, but a change in some base. So let me give an example. Suppose that a coffee shop decides to increase its prices by 5%. If a small cup of coffee previously cost $1.80, how much will it cost after the price increase? In order to figure this out, notice we are not told explicitly what the base is here. In order to figure this out, we need to bring in some outside knowledge about the way that this percent change language is used. The way that this language is used is, when we're dealing with a percent change, that is, a percent increase or a percent decrease, the base is always the starting value of whatever quantity is changing. And then the portion, what in this case 5% of the base represents, is the change in the quantity. And then, just like we saw when we met signed changes previously, we should represent an increase with a positive number and a decrease with a negative number. Okay, let's see how this comes together. In order to answer this question, we're going to increase its price by 5%. 5% of what? 5% of the starting value. So in this problem, our base is $1.80. We're told the percent. That's 5%, which, if we write it as a decimal, is 0 0.05. And then the portion is the change in the price. Notice, since I want to get a positive change, I'm expressing my percent as a positive 5%. So I say, my unknown change is 5% times $1.80, which works out to 0 0.05 times 1.8 is, oh, 9 cents. Now, I'm not done with the question, though. I'm asked to find the final price. So I'm going to use final is start plus change. So in this problem, my final price is $1.80 plus the nine cent increase is $1.89. So after the increase, it costs $1.89. You might be looking at this and thinking, isn't there some sort of shortcut? And the answer is that, yes, there is some sort of shortcut. Let's see if we can find out what it is. Here were the steps that we took. First, we said that change is the percent change times the starting value. And instead of using all these words, I'm going to say C is percent change times start. In this problem, we found that the change was 0 0.05 times $1.80. And then we said that final is start plus change. So final is start plus change. 
In this problem, we said final is $1.80 plus 0 0.05 times $1.80. So notice what we did over here. We put in this expression for change. Final equals start plus the percent change times start. OK, so now I'm going to make a slightly weird move. See if you follow this move. I have final equals 1 times the starting value plus the percent change times the starting value. And now I'm going to use the distributive property backwards. Instead of multiplying 1 by the starting value and then multiplying the percent by the starting value and adding them together, I can instead add first and then multiply. In my specific problem, instead of saying 1 times $1.80 plus 5% times $1.80, I could have instead said 1 plus 5% times $1.80. Let's check and make sure that we still get the same answer. 1 plus 5% is 1.05. 1 1.05 times $1.80 really does give me that $1.89. This gives us a general equation for percent change. The final value is 1 plus the percent change times the starting value. And if we're doing all of our arithmetic by hand, this might make the arithmetic unnecessarily awkward. But if we're using a calculator, we can always use this formula. Let's see some examples of this formula in action. We might see an example where a $10 price decreases by 20% and be asked to find what is the new price. The final price is what we're looking for. The percent change, because this is a decrease, we're going to say the change is negative. 20% is 0.2. And then the starting price was $10. So my final price will be 1 plus negative 0.2 times 10. 1 plus negative 0.2 times 10 gives me 8. Maybe we're told that after a 12% increase, the population of a small town is 7,056. And we want to know what was the population before. The percent change is still just the percent change that we're told. It's an increase, so it's positive. That 7,056 is the population after the change, so that's the final population. Plugging into the formula, we get 7056 is 1 plus 0.12 times our unknown starting population, which is what we want to know. Okay, doing that addition in the parentheses, 7056 is 1.12 times s, 
We'll divide both sides by 1.12. 7056 divided by 1.12 gives us 6,300. What was the population before? 6,300. Finally, we might be asked a question like this. Suppose that a stock's value goes from $80 to $70. What was the percent change? In this problem, the percent change is what we're looking for. The value goes from 80 to 70. So the starting price was 80 and the final price was 70. So we'll say 70 equals 1 plus P times 80. We know what to do here as well. We need to get that P out of the parentheses. So we're going to distribute and now we need to solve. What's keeping P from being by itself? We have this other term and this coefficient. We want to get rid of the term first. To get rid of a term we want to add or subtract. Subtract in this case. That will cancel out. 70 minus 80 is negative 10. So I'll have negative 10 is 80p. And now we want to get rid of the coefficient. To get rid of a coefficient, we multiply or divide. We'll divide in this case. And we get negative one-eighth is p. We want to answer as a percent, so we'll say negative one-eighth times a hundred is, oh, negative 12.5. So we'll say the percent change was negative 12.5% or we could say this was a 12.5 percent decrease. We can either use the negative sign or use the word decrease to show that it's decreasing.